Hi, this is a demonstration of the sample tracking and lab testing application developed by Demagi. This application is built on Demagi's open source platform Comcare and is available to be used free of charge. This is a template application. Any organization that supports COVID-19 response can download it and edit the content to fit its needs. The sample tracking and lab testing application supports healthcare systems to streamline sample management between the healthcare facility and the lab and to triage the test results. To create this application, Demagi drew inspiration from the WHO's interim guidance on lab testing. The application allows you to do the following. You can register patients, also called cases. You can register samples to these patients. You can register lab test results to each sample, and you can view the history of lab test results for each patient. The application also notifies providers of new lab test results that have become available. It also notifies providers to collect a new sample in the case of an invalid or inconclusive test results, or if the sample was rejected at the lab. Let's get started. After logging in, I will click on Start to enter the application. Next, I will click on All Cases to enter the main part of the application. Here we have a case list which represents the patients, or cases, which are currently enrolled in the application. The first column is the patient ID, which is a unique case ID for this patient. Next, we have the patient's name, last and first. The last column includes icons which tell us more about the patient's current status. The orange microbe symbol indicates that Boris Johnson has tested positive for COVID-19. Underneath, there is a faint gray symbol of the microbe with an X over it. This tells us that Barack Obama was tested negative for COVID-19. The third patient, Angela Merkel, has a clock indicating that her results are still pending. Let's complete an entire workflow, starting by registering a new patient. Let's say he is a suspected case, date of birth, Note that there's no validation condition on the phone number because each country may have a different length of phone number. Next, we have to assign a unique case ID for the patient. We have two ways of doing this, either through a manual entry or by clicking on generate a unique case ID, which then gives us a seven digit random unique ID. Next, we're asked whether we're ready to register a sample right now. We can either say yes and proceed with the sample registration or say no, not right now. Let's do this for now. Finally, we have a quick summary of what we captured. We click on finish to save the information. Now we're brought to this secondary menu where we can register a sample for this patient, edit the patient information, everything we just captured, or view their test results. Just to show you quickly, when we click on Edit Patient Information, we'll get a list of the information previously captured. Let's say we wanted to correct his phone number and also add an alternative phone number. So we can say that's the correct number and an alternative phone number can be this. Finish and the information is saved. Now, let's take a look again at our all cases case list. Now we can see that Justin Trudeau was entered as a patient into the application. The reason he has no icons next to his name is because there was no sample collected for him yet. When we click here, we see the information previously collected. We can also call him directly from here in case we needed to contact him. Let's now continue to register a sample for him. So this screen tells us that we'll be registering a sample for this patient, and we're asked just to confirm before continuing. The sample is collected on today's date, so we'll leave the date as is. We select the type of test, followed by the type of sample collected. Next, we have to assign a unique ID to the sample. We can choose for manual entry, where we type a unique ID, 
or by generating a unique ID. Next, we're asked whether the sample has a QR code or a barcode associated with it. Let's say yes. We'll click on Get Barcode. For the purposes of this demo, I'm using the barcode on the back of a book. Next, we're asked whether the test result is already available for the sample. This might be in the case of a rapid diagnostic test or in the case of the information being transcribed from paper. Let's say no. Finally, we have a confirmation summary of the information collected and we click on finish to submit the form. Now, let's go back to all cases to see what has happened. You'll see that a little clock icon has appeared next to Justin Trudeau, indicating that a sample was taken, but the results are still pending. Let's go back to the main menu and click on register test results. Here we have a case list of the samples that are open or pending, meaning that the sample was collected, but no lab test results has been added to the sample. Let's take a look at the sample we just registered. First, there's a confirmation screen where we can see the sample's ID, the date the sample was collected, the type of sample, the patient ID, and the patient family name. This is to confirm that we will be registering the lab test result for the correct sample. So we confirm and continue. We're asked to provide the laboratory ID number. Let's say that. The date the sample was received by the lab. Let's say that was today. Next, we register the actual result of the sample. Let's say the sample was rejected. On the final screen, the person who is entering this information is told that when they submit the form, the healthcare facility will be informed to collect a new sample from this patient and that there is no further action required by them. For data purposes, they might want to indicate the reason for sample rejection. The sample has now disappeared from this list because it is no longer a sample that is pending results. Let's go back to all cases. As you can see, patient Justin Trudeau is now at the top of the list with an icon next to his name indicating that the sample was rejected. This indicates to the healthcare facility that Justin will need to be called in again for a new sample to be taken. Once we're ready to take a new sample for him, we'll click here, continue, and click on register sample. There are several ways to look for a sample. We can look up the sample by its unique ID, by the patient's last name. Alternatively, we can look up a sample with the QR or barcode scanner. Once I've scanned the barcode, it tells me that one sample matches this barcode. Once again, I have a confirmation screen. The test was able to be run, and the test result is negative. Here, I enter the dates of the lab test result. We leave it as today's date. Then, I'm asked to enter the type of test that was run. And finally, I'm asked whether the specimen was shipped to another lab for confirmation of the test results. Let's say yes. The sample has now disappeared from this list because it is no longer a sample that is pending results. When we go back to all cases, we can see that Justin Trudeau is again at the top of the list, but now with a different icon. The first icon is a test result with a yellow star indicating that a new result is available to be viewed, and the second icon indicates that he tested negative for COVID-19. When we click on the patient, we can also see that his current case status has updated from suspected case to tested negative for COVID-19. 
When we click on View Test Results, we can see a history of the samples that were taken. Because the samples were taken on the same date, there is no particular order to this list. Otherwise, it would be a chronological list with the most recent results on the top. If we wanted to see more information for each sample, we would simply click on it, click on View Test Results, and be able to see all the information, such as the type of sample it was, and what the test result was. As I mentioned, the yellow star on the test result icon indicates that it's a new result that has come in. The idea is that this icon stays as is until someone views the results. Let's do that now. Click on the sample, click on view test results, and are able to see a quick summary of the information about the sample and about the test results. Here, we're asked about processing or triaging the test results. There are two questions. One, has the test result been recorded in the patient file? And two, has the patient been informed of their test results? In some scenarios, it may not be necessary to record the results in the patient file. Maybe the facility is only using Comcare for its patient records, or there is an integration set up between Comcare and the electronic medical record system. In that case, we would click on not applicable or not necessary. There might be cases where the patient will not be informed of their test results, maybe if the result was invalid or inconclusive. In that case, you would select not applicable or not necessary. Let's say in this case, the patient was informed. As you can see, our patient, Justin Trudeau, has actually dropped down in the list in terms of priority. Just as the other two patients with results, Barack Obama and Boris Johnson, his icon has now changed to a test result with a blue check mark, indicating that his results have been processed, meaning they have recorded it in the patient file, if applicable, and informed the patient, if applicable. Finally, let's take a look at the education module. When we click here, we find that there is some education around sample collection techniques. When we enter the form, we find two videos. The first demonstrates the correct method of taking a nasal swab, and the second demonstrates the correct method of taking a throat or oral swab. The videos are able to be seen in the form as shown or in full screen by clicking this button. These videos are courtesy of Digital Medic, an initiative by the Stanford Center for Health Education. Thank you for watching the demo video for the COVID-19 sample tracking and lab testing application. Remember that organizations can easily modify all application content using Comcare's Turnkey Application Builder. For additional documentation and instructions on how to download a copy of this template application or any other template applications, please visit www.demagi.com forward slash COVID-19.